conversations that you know you think about for months, years after. A uh, great moment of the college. There are so many great moments. Every student I meet. But every time I go back, I know I'm going to meet a familiar face, whether it's. That really shaped the rest of my existence in every possible way. I uh, was born in Cambridge, uh, actually. Uh, my parents came from the north of Scotland. I don't remember Cambridge. We left when I was one. Um, and I grew up in various places. Um, went to um, a girls' grammar school at that time. And um, music was one of my many interests, really. Uh, my parents used to play music at home and I used to enjoy doing music, but I enjoyed a lot of uh, activities. Um, in my later teens, I did focus a bit more on music and that's when the idea of maybe doing a music degree came up. In my secondary school, uh, I had a group of friends who all had very different musical instruments, really a crazy selection, and it was clear to me that we would never find any music. So at first I started just arranging popular tunes for this group, uh, and that led very naturally to writing new music. So it was in the middle of, of my teens, again, just very much as a, a hobby. The reason that I thought of applying to Cambridge was really because in my last couple of years at school I'd played in the National Youth Orchestra and a lot of the people who were in that went on to Cambridge and my idea of Cambridge was that you would be able to play lots of, of music in your spare time, which was absolutely true, that turned out to be exactly so. Um, so yes, Cambridge went on my my list and um, I'm not sure that I did as much research as I should have done but um, I knew of Cambridge also really through the famous King's College carol service that's the other thing I knew about it. When I went up in 1973 that was the second year of women's admission in other words, two years earlier, there'd been no women uh, students, dons or anything in, in the college academic uh, departments. There were very few women graduate students by that time. Uh, as far as I can remember, perhaps just one or two women fellows. And um, certainly when we went out into our um, faculties to study our subjects, I mean, me in the music department, um, the statistic was one in ten women were in, in my class. So um, it was really all male in a way that's quite difficult to explain these days, especially given that only three colleges had taken this decision uh, as all male colleges to admit women. And of course there were the three splendid all women's colleges which had been there for some time. I think we had to think of ourselves as trailblazers because there was almost no alternative. Uh, King's, I think, was really good about its intention to admit women. I never met anybody who didn't think it was a good idea. It seemed completely the right thing to do. But I'm afraid in the rest of Cambridge, and that included people who were teaching us from other colleges, there were a lot of people who thought it was a crazy idea. Uh, they all said to us, our college will never go mixed. And so even if we went up, and that was certainly my case, thinking, oh, isn't this marvelous? Um, you soon, soon realized that you were in many ways in quite a hostile environment in the wider university. So um, we had to think of ourselves, I think, as uh, in, in the front, front soldiers of, of this movement. The music course, um, I'm sure, always has been and sort of still is quite a 
theoretical course based on historical practice. There's nothing wrong with that. I think partly I wasn't ready. It was difficult for me to fulfill a lot of the exercises, writing fugue and counterpoint and so on. It took a long time to learn how to do that. Um, there was some good teaching and some not so good teaching. I'm very grateful to King's, particularly my second year, my supervisor, Dr. Julian Rushton, r really taught me a great deal. Uh, but again, in the wider university, I think there was the idea that music consisted of the chapel choirs and many of the teachers, really their main job, fair enough, was running their chapel choir. And the idea of actually teaching was not in the forefront. I think probably things have enormously improved. I know that they have. It's still a very historical course and I warn or advise some y young students who I meet that, that that's what it will be like. The great beauty of Cambridge is that you can do loads of music without studying music and I think that's a big recommendation I, I find myself making a lot of times. Well, I was still an oboe player. Um, I remember in Cambridge, I, somebody sold me an old saxophone. So um, some of the time I played in orchestras, for instance, in Kings, we would uh, have quite good uh, concerts with the college and sometimes even accompany the choir in, in some quite big concerts. As time went on, I found that my interests as a composer took, took a, a more forefront um, stage and um, I did a lot of improvising with a, a group that was a very in fashion thing I think in the mid 70s. Um, I remember I founded a little marching band there was a great era of going on marches and protests and sit-ins we, we used to go and play at things like that. So towards the end I was doing less formal music but doing other interesting things. Kings was very, very left when I went there. And of course, when I went there, people said, oh, you should have seen it a few years ago. Uh, and th there had been a very recent um, history of involvement of some of the dons and students in the famous Garden House riots, which ended up in people being imprisoned. So it was in no means um, just a bit of a joke or a student thing. It was a serious, serious thing. Um, well, politics uh, moves an, an awful lot. It's difficult exactly to explain. Um, for a while I was secretary of KCSU and that was often, you know, there was quite a strong political content to that. So I was aware of that. But I think people took politics very seriously. Um, it, it was a time when there were a lot of general elections in which we were allowed to vote because the, the voting age had uh, descended to 18. Um, and I can remember with all my friends keeping a, a close eye on that. So I would say that we were very involved in politics and um, yeah that was a, a, an important part of King's life. I had in my last um, times in Cambridge been doing some music um, just outside Cambridge in a housing estate and I'm sorry to say I can't now remember exactly where it was. Um, this was to do with my little band and um, as a result of that I got a um, sort of a job contract with um, yes a community arts organization um, where I in the end spent three years mostly doing music in schools, teaching, um, once again getting bands together, writing for these groups. Um, this fitted again very well into the ethos of, of the mid-1970s. Um, so yes, it, it was rather informal type, type of work, but um, I, I think it was, although I didn't plan it that way, absolutely an ideal complement to what I'd been uh, experiencing in Cambridge, um, where everybody had been taught to such high standards in terms of being a performer and going to places where there was pretty much no music or if there was it was very much people who'd learnt their own instruments and uh, yeah I, I think um, without having planned that it was an extremely good contrast.
I think uh, composition is both um, graft and, and inspiration. It's difficult to get started on a piece of music unless you really have some strong wish to do it or some strong reason, i.e. a deadline. But nevertheless, it, it, the element of hard work sitting at the table um, hour after hour is, is also important. One thing I think is typical, I think, of most composers, we all have, as it were, portfolio careers. We're always doing lots of different things. So I think that idea of sitting down every morning at nine o'clock and doing your four or five hours, that exists for very few people. Uh, and, and perhaps that's just as well. Well, I've done a lot of opera alongside other things, but I, what I love about opera is just it is the widest range of talents come, comes to bear. And I think I've particularly enjoyed the non-musical side of it, the um, collaborations with directors and designers, and even just the whole mechanical thing of being in the theatre, how, how that works. Um, how the audience pick it up, that, that becomes a very big feature in opera. Um, yeah, that, it's, it's an endlessly fascinating um, way to work. I don't experience the critical reception very much anymore because I always have lots more work to do, so it's, it's not like um, uh, adverse reaction to my work would enormously affect what I do the next day. Like anybody, I would like to think that the music has, people have enjoyed it on the most basic level. Um, I think critical views are, are more for later generations perhaps to look back at. They, they don't seem to reach us creators very much. And I think also that thing of there being eight or ten critics uh, attending your work, that those days have definitely gone. Audience reception really interests me. I, because I've attended so many performances of my work, I think I have a strong instinct for how performances are going. I, I tend to absorb that very carefully, and um, I can't help being affected by that, or at least taking that in. I definitely go out of each performance or event at which my work has figured. I, I think having quite a strong impression of it did go well, it didn't go well, th that's, that's sort of interesting. To think of um, a, a, an audience event that's really struck me in, in recent times, uh, I wrote a, yeah, an oratorio, I would call it a 45-minute piece, with quite small forces, which was performed in the proms, but the performance was given in Southwark Cathedral, which is quite local to where I live. Um, thanks, I think, to the proms and their mighty PR organisation, it was an absolutely packed um, house, and in, indeed we could have um, had more people come if there'd been more space. So there was already that excitement of, 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 of kind of expectation there. Um, it happened that a month or two earlier had been the terrible terrorist events in Borough Market which adjoined the cathedral, so that had still been on people's minds and um, quite a lot of the cathedral regulars and, and clergy were, were there to hear the performance. And the fact that it got a very sort of joyous reception really meant a lot to me. Uh, I felt I had done more than just write a piece that people had enjoyed. I felt I'd taken part in something in that venue that had been important to them too. So uh, that's, that's the very best that, that can happen. I'm often asked what is Master of the Queen's Music and the answer is nobody I think knows. Uh, it's a 400 year old job. In earlier times it was to do with arranging performances of music in, in the royal court. Uh, that obviously uh, isn't really m my job now. Um, as the job continues, I think it's felt that on at some national occasions, pieces, new pieces of music could be composed, and I, I do that one or two times a year. Um, 
in the last decade, I think there's a strong feeling that the, the master should become involved in music education because certainly in, in schools we, we have to defend that and, and to stick up for, for the importance of music in, in, in everybody's education. It would take a long time, I think, to follow the ins and outs of how much music has been involved generally in, in school education. I think there have been times when there's just been generally a bit more f freedom and a bit more money to spare in schools, and we're definitely not in one of those periods at the moment. Um, I think one could have a, a long discussion about how exactly music should figure in school. Um, I personally don't worry too much about the music exams. I think those will be taken by those who want to proceed with music. But it seems to me very desirable that school pupils should be singing or playing some music. Uh, if for nothing else than a, a period of relaxation and something different in their school day. Uh, we hear so much now about um, anxiety and depression amongst, e even amongst younger people under 18 and the, the pressures of, of school life. And for me, the, the perfect thing is to stop and even just do 10 minutes singing or uh, just do a, a hum or something like that. So in my own trips into school, I, I try and um, persuade that there should be just a bit of time spent on music, whatever kind. But I would be delighted if uh, music as a subject became again more important in the school curriculum because as is often pointed out, it's probably the only subject which requires theoretical, i.e. maths type thinking. It requires practical skills and it requires a bit of interest in the history of music. So it's an extremely um, yeah, challenging in the right way subject. I, I, I recommend it from that point of view. In the mid-1980s, I had been in Cambridge um, revisiting it for a resident composer job at Trinity College, and Stephen Cleabury had just come to King's as uh, Director of Music. Um, and as I remember, I can't exactly remember how this happened, but he invited me to write a carol for the Nine Lessons and Carols service, and uh, I had, I don't think, written I'd written one other choral piece, so it's very adventurous of him to ask me. Um, but it, it seemed interesting, so I did do that, and th that's a carol called Illuminare Jerusalem, um, which Stephen continued to uh, perform in that carol service, and he's recorded it on CD. Um, so in that way, I started coming back to King's uh, from time to time. I wrote some other choral music, which again has, um, Stephen has featured it, both in services and concerts. And um, so that gave me a, a professional link with Kings. And I think also felt, I felt that I was doing something successful and, and professional, you know, as a student, I felt rather hopeless and that I wasn't uh, really matching up to, to what was needed. Whereas now I was bringing something that I'd worked on myself and that um, was working out. So it, it was a very important step in my relationship really with the college. There's no question, and I know this as a musician who travels a lot, that uh, King's College Chapel Choir is, is truly world famous. Um, there are lots of, of famous musical groups coming out of this country, but this is something different. Of course, it's linked to the building itself, which is such an important building, you know, amongst one of the world's greatest buildings. So the fact that there is a really very highly regarded choir and a, a famous building together. It, it's a very unusual bit of teamwork. And um, I think as an image of Cambridge, of a university, th there are very few things like that. Um, and the choir have been very adventurous in their recordings, so there's now a lot of music. Those who are actually interested in classical choral music certainly have, have a lot of, of music to follow.
in the history of kings, there have been some very long-lived people, but I think he's one of the one or two longest staying directors of music. And in the musical world, that's un unusual because it, it's a very fluent uh, world now. People are always passing on to new jobs. So simply the continuity of the, um, I think over 35 years that he's spent there is very significant. Um, for me, it's been a wonderful era of the choir. Um, the sound, it seems to me, is uh, so rich, so, so beautiful. And above all, as a, as a listener to music, I, I feel the repertory of, of the choir is, is very, very important now. Very wide, but very, I, I just have to say, the best kind of, of music. Uh, if you drop into the chapel any time, you will hear extremely important music of, of the older and newer generation. And I just have to make that point because there's a lot of kitsch in religious choral music. There's a lot of rather clappy, happy music. Oh, you don't hear that in Kings. It's all really important, serious music. And always given that utter seriousness, uh, by Stephen. Um, I always have a wonderful time when I meet him, but the seriousness of approach in, in the actual work is, is immensely important, and I think that has really grown during his time. I'm writing another oratorio for the BBC Singers. It's actually uh, kind of, I guess I'd describe it as Buddhist in, in, uh, in its outlook. I hope, before I stop composing, maybe to do a bit more opera. Um, I've just written uh, some orchestral music. Uh, the, the, the diet is always very varied, uh, and it's, it's, it's more something day by day. I don't sit and make plans. That I just really always have to get on with it. King's is, I think, interesting to me, if I can manage to look outside of it. Firstly, it's, um, we'd have to use the word iconic, perhaps properly, just for once, in that it's this famous old building, just the most perfect example of the beauty of Cambridge and the wonderful historical choir, which dates from the time of the building. So it is the most important historical place. On the other hand, my King's, as I remember it, was quite a radical, forward-looking college, full of people doing interesting new science, computing. And so those two things together, which are completely... The thing that makes them not contradictory is, is that they're King's, and how fantastic that there could be a place that, that is like that.